Hi, and welcome back to Psychology with Mr. Snyder. And today we are going to discuss experimental research design and ethical issues in psychology. Learning targets. So we'll discuss the experimental method. We will talk about central tendency. And we will discuss ethics in psychology. Let's get started. So in psychology, we use the experimental method to answer questions about cause and effect. Remember, correlation does not reveal cause and effect. It only reveals relationships between two items, positive and negative. This is how we answer questions about what causes something. But first, in our hypotheses and in our experiment, we have to talk about the variables. And an operational definition is what variables are and how they are measured within the context of the experiment. So you might do an experiment on sleep. What is sleep? Is sleep uh, getting into bed? Is sleep actually falling asleep? Is it entering REM, stage one, two, three? What is it? And so it may seem simple. It may seem, well, sleep is sleep, but you do have to define what those are. The dependent and independent variables are in the experiment, and a variable is something that can change. It varies, variable. And so the independent variable is the factor that researchers manipulate. It may be something, everything, the goal of an experiment is to have everything the same except for the independent variable. And then the dependent variable is dependent on the independent variable. That is what we are going to measure. The value changes depending on the manipulation of the independent variable. So you got to keep those straight. There are different kinds of groups. There are the experimental groups and the control groups. The members of the experimental group are the ones who receive the treatment, whatever it is. Members of the control group do not. And everything else is held constant for both groups. And a controlled experiment is one that uses both a control group and an experimental group. Let's talk about placebo. The placebo is a substance that might be given to the control group that has no effect. So it might, if it's a medicine they're testing, it might be a sugar pill. And believe it or not, these people will feel better because they believe they are receiving medicine and they believe it should be helping them. So feeling better simply because we expect to feel better is an example of the placebo effect, and that must be accounted for in controlled experiments. Single and blind and double blind studies. Single blind study is one where the participants are unaware of the treatment they are receiving, whether it's a placebo or the real treatment itself. They don't know what group they're in, whether it's the control group or the experimental group. A single blind study Basically, in every study, participants should be unaware of the treatment they are receiving. Um, it's one r way that researchers can avoid uh, expectations. But if the researcher knows that the participant is receiving the treatment, then they still can have bias. So a double-blind study is required of any drug or anything going on the market by the FDA. A double blind study is one in which both the participants and researchers are unaware of who is getting the treatments. Only the experimenter knows who is who. Or only, I'm sorry, only the experiment organizer, one person has a list of who is who. Double blind studies help the, avoid the influence of bias and expectations. Single and double blind studies help avoid the expectations and bias. Here it is in a chart who is aware and unaware. The participants are always unaware and the experiment organizers are aware. So the difference is, is the researcher aware or not? Let's talk about central tendency. It's, we've done this in math before. It's a number that describes the average score. Different central tendencies are mean, median, and mode. The mean, is the, the mean is the average, the median is the middle, the mode is the most frequent score. They're all measures of central tendency. We also use range and standard deviation to talk about the variability of a score. You know what the range is? The range is the difference between the lowest and highest score. And the standard deviation is a measure of distance of every score to the mean. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, standard deviation units 
Uh, you can see plus one, plus two, negative one, negative two are all the same. 34.13% of scores fell in the first unit of standard deviation, 13.59 fell in the second, and thus, et cetera. And so that is the standard deviation bell curve graph. Ethics. Ethics in psychology. What are ethics in general? They are standards for proper and responsible behavior. The APA has established specific ethical guidelines, and those are listed in your book, that psychologists are required to follow, either, either when it's research with people or research with animals. In research with people, the leading principle, the thing that above all else, is that participants must not be harmed. And so there are a couple different things we need to take into account. Physically harmed, emotionally harmed, uh, legally harmed, anything like that. So confidentiality. Uh, psychologists treat the records of their participants and clients as confidential. They can't reveal it to anyone unless uh, the person is going to hurt themselves or whether they're going to hurt others. That's the only case they can disregard confidentiality. Informed consent. The APA requires that people who volunteer provide informed consent. It means that you agree to participate only after you know what you're participating in. You've been informed of the study and given a chance on whether or not to participate. And then lastly, some experiments cannot be run without deception. A um, leading principle on, on this is does the good outweigh the harm? And so new drug experiments and blind studies cannot be run without uh, deception. Participants must be unaware of whether or not they're getting the real medicine. So we follow APA guidelines, does the harm, does the good outweigh the harm when we use deception. Ethics in using data. They need to not manipulate the scores. They need to store it, produce it, and present it in ethical ways. They need to be objective when conducting a study in order to avoid this bias, and they must be willing to discuss their hypothesis even if they're wrong. Even if you're wrong, you still publish your work so that other people can see that you were wrong and that line of thinking was wrong in this experiment. Doing otherwise would be misleading and unethical. Here are some other ethical issues that the APA takes into uh, um, consideration on how to resolve. And finally, research with animals. Most psychological studies do not harm the animals. Uh, sometimes they need to carry out a study that could be harmful to animals. So such studies use animals because they cannot be carried out with people for ethical reasons. And some people still may argue that hurting an animal is no more ethical than hurting a person, but still, it must be done. Uh, that's up for your own ethical consideration. Uh, so studies with animals happen because they cannot be carried out with people for ethical reasons. Only a small amount of studies involve this, and the APA still has rules of ethics for how animals um, that are used in research should be treated. And that's all I have for you today. Uh, fill out your learning targets, and I will see you back here in class tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.